It's warping as you sand it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Willy Wonka keycap. <laughs> oh no. Alright, let me tell you guys, they got the best sponsor for this video. And it's me. Alright, look right below this video, right down there. What do you see? It's the join button. My god, Hippiotech has done it, ladies and gentlemen. But what does it mean? Well, for the 85.6% of you that aren't subscribed, nothing will change. But for that juicy 13.6% gang, you can now click that join button to get a badge next to all of your comments, get emotes, get perks like exclusive bloopers, and you can support the channel. I'd really appreciate it if you check it out. I originally got the idea for this video while looking at Instagram. I found people like Yukio Keys, and I really thought that resin keycaps would be a fun thing to do. And I thought, well, it can't be that hard. I figured you just pour some resin in a mold and bada bing, bada boom, you got some cool keycaps. Ah, uh, I was pretty wrong. What I soon found out is that resin is more temperamental than a high schooler that got their cell phone taken away. So, you're gonna see some mistakes in this video. Instead of being more of a tutorial like some of my other videos, this is gonna be a lot of showing you what not to do. But this should still be really helpful if you're thinking of making resin keycaps on your own. I'm Hippiotech, and this is Shifty DIY Episode 5, DIY Resin Keycaps. There are a few different ways that you can make resin keycaps, and I chose to go with the two-part epoxy resin. Each different type of resin has its own perks, and this one in particular had a 40 minute working time, which I thought would give me enough time to make a couple different keycaps without freaking out before it hardened. I also used mica powder for coloring, and some gold flakes. I also recommend using a respirator, and I did it outside just to be super safe, as the fumes are pretty toxic. And of course gloves. Some other things that I used that were pretty helpful were toothpicks, as well as a heat gun to pop some of the bubbles, which didn't work that well, but it tried its best. And some plastic cups. I recommend using resin mixing cups instead, as the ones that I used were just way too big. I also used these silicone keycap molds, which I got from Amazon. They're definitely not the best, and they gave some mixed results, which you'll see later in the video. If I was doing this more often, I would definitely recommend going to zappycaps.com and using some of their 3D printed models to make your own molds. These molds don't work for any keycap above one unit, unless I'm just completely missing something. There's no way that you can fit in enough of these stems to get stabilizers. So hindsight is 2020, and 2020 has been a pretty bad year. But looking back on this, there's a lot of things that I did wrong. This resin mixes with two parts, parts A and B. And you're supposed to have exactly equal amounts of both of them. And we kind of just eyeballed it, which was a really bad idea. If you're doing this yourself, you should definitely use the scale and get exact gram weight, as well as making sure that you empty your measuring cups perfectly. The reason these ratios need to be perfect is so your resin can properly harden. We then stirred it for around four minutes very slowly. I was doing this project with my girlfriend, and we really didn't do much research, and we kind of just eyeballed everything and had a little bit of fun. To fill in the actual keycaps, we just took a little bit of the resin mixture and used a popsicle stick that was included with it and poured a bit in. And then, like a Bob Ross painting, we kind of just made our canvas however we wanted to. We put in some gold flex, and then we used indiscriminate amounts of mica powder. We definitely put too much in some and too little in others but it led to some interesting color combinations, which you'll see soon. Here's where I'll definitely say don't follow my tutorial. If you want different colors of resin to look really good, you should mix the mica in different cups and then pour it in so it disperses evenly. With this particular mold, you need to make sure you fill the top stems with resin. If you don't, then the stems won't form. This is foreshadowing, by the way. Another mistake we learned is that it's better to overfill your mold rather than underfill it, as if you underfill it, the resin will just pour out of the stem, and then a proper stem won't form. It's also worth mentioning that we used a heat gun to pop some of the bubbles, but we didn't use it nearly enough, as the end result had a lot of bubbles. I'll give you a little preview into some of our struggles. Alright, this is my wonderful, bad, gold, <laughs> gold plate endeavor. Oh no, it's not anymore. Is that kind of in focus? Um. The keycap I'm making here actually turned out the best of all of them. And the reason why is I think I overfilled it a lot. And as you can see, it kind of splashed out of the edges. My hunch is that this splash actually proved to be a good thing as it let the stem properly sit in place. We then made a bunch of keycaps off screen with a couple different techniques. 
and then we let them sit outside for around 24 hours to cure. Now, it was definitely too cold outside, and 24 hours was definitely not long enough to cure, but you'll find out why very shortly. If you're doing this yourself, the ideal temperature for working resin is around 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 degrees Celsius. So if you're doing this outside in the winter and leaving it outside in the winter, your results may vary and your cure times might suck. We're a little bit overzealous to break into these because we really wanted to see if they worked and they seemed dry enough. But what we will soon find out is that they were not dry enough. The 24 hours that we let them set out for was enough for them to slightly harden, but not enough for them to fully cure. But look at this thing. This looks pretty nice for a first try. As I started to peel them out, I started to get a bit worried. Oh, oh no. Oh, hello. Oh no, it mushed. It might not be set, it physically mushed. Yes, past Hippio was right. They did not set properly. But what does this mean? Well, when working with resin, there's so many different variables that at the time we really couldn't tell. It could have been that our mix ratio was off, that they didn't cure for long enough, the temperature was wrong, that they were in a bad mood. But the main thing that we knew was that the stems didn't form properly. This was because we underfilled them, like I mentioned earlier. We also probably didn't fill the stems properly enough with resin. So my perfect project that I thought would be really easy was actually not really easy and was in fact a catastrophic failure on the first attempt. There were also quite a lot of imperfections on the bottoms of some of them. And from looking online, everyone said that you just need to sand them down. So we thought, okay, great idea, let's do that. It's warping as you sand it. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> well, let me just see one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Willy Wonka keycap. <laughs> oh no. I don't think sanding's worth it. Poor guy. At this point, we really thought they were all ruined. They were all squishy like gummies, and your keycaps should not be squishy like gummies. If you had gummy squishy keycaps, it would be a fun typing experience, but then your keyboard would get all messy, and that's just gross. Next, we tried to put them on a keyboard and use them as keycaps. Well. <laughs> but what we found out is that some worked better than others but not this one. For it to be a real key. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Feeling like we lost, we kind of just left them to sit for a day. But then, to our surprise, we tested them the next day. And they were completely hardened, like normal keycaps. But what this didn't fix is that the stems still kind of sucked. So they were normal keycap hardness, meaning that they just needed to sit for an extra day and cure for longer. Out of the whole bunch that we made, around two or three actually worked as normal keycaps, which was pleasantly surprising. We actually got keycaps out of this. Another thing that we noticed was that while they were still squishy, it was really easy to peel away some of the imperfections, which made it so they look better now. If we wanted to, we could actually sand them down and make them look a bit perfect now that they're actually hard. But there were a few too many bubbles in our resin, so it really just didn't turn out how we wanted to. If we were to do this again, we now learned so many different mistakes that we made that we can improve on in the future. I hope by watching this video, you learn some of those mistakes and will improve your resin keycap making in the future. If you end up making them, tag me on Instagram at Hippiotech and I'd love to see them. If you like this video, remember to give it a like, hit subscribe, and consider clicking that new join button to support the channel. If you wanna see a follow-up video where I try and make keycaps without failing, leave a comment and let me know. Also, let me know if you like this shifty DIY series. I have a lot more in store for 2021.